This is a collection of salt and pepper shakers at the lake on a windowsill that I decided to make as a follow-up painting. This is the line drawing for the collection of decoys. And these are the fall leaves on the ground. And the view out of the window is the weather changing. following week, the leaves are thicker. Here's the setup I decided on for the salt and pepper collection. They're on a tool box, on a barbecue tool box, and I've added a couple toys. You can see the weather change there, just before snow. The beginning line drawing. This is the decoys almost finished. And this shot is the view from the hospital. I had a stroke <laughs> and spent three weeks in the hospital on the Upper West Side of New York. After I came out of the hospital, uh, my family took me for a walk through a swamp that has a walkway. It's near where we have the house in New Jersey. This is the living room of our house in New Jersey. This is the living room of the uh, loft on 36th Street. back to the lake, but on a very foggy day. And this is the final of the uh, decoy painting. I've added the border of the rug that they face in the upper right corner. That's the final. Then I decided to be more ambitious. And this is a view of a cluster of antiquities from several cultures, including uh, a few from uh, Mexico, pre-Columbian. That fish is from Thailand. It's part of a fountain. That's why it has those holes in the sides. And in the mouth, water should be coming from it. That large urn in the middle is Han Dynasty, Chinese, and... Uh, the Buddha head that's almost in the middle of the painting is from um, Myanmar. And down below that triangular point is Taino. It's from the Taino culture from the Dominican Republic. That's the setup. Each shot shows more objects that have been added. Then I started adding the local color, including the shadows. This went over a long period of time. And here comes the first snow.
back in New York and this painting is almost complete. Now it is complete, the painting of that little head in the foreground. The detail. That's the very final of the painting. We spend the weekends at the lake house. That's the completed watercolor. This is another setup in New York. Again, a collection from several cultures. This is at the lake house. And it slowly progresses. Each weekend, I did a couple more figures. This is in the New York studio. The beginning, the line drawing. In the center is a mushroom god. I'm not sure of the culture. It is pre-Columbian. And behind him is another pre-Columbian figure of a woman. The lake is frozen. And there is my grandson ice skating on the lake. This watercolor is almost complete. I've added to this setup these two American Indian bowls, but they're Anasazi. Anasazi is ancient. The tribes disappeared around 1200, I believe, 1200 AD. It is, but the mushroom god is uh, one of my most impressive pieces, and I've not seen another one in any museum. That's the final of that painting. It's the salt and pepper shakers. The uh, toolbox, the barbecue toolbox, and the three toys added up front, which took about six weekends to complete. This is searching for a new setup. It's the view across the street from the studio in the snowstorm. The snow piled up on the table, I thought was pretty funny. Anyway, this is a collection of toys. I'm trying to do a new setup. I have a large collection of old toys. I've been fascinated by them. There is so much detail. This is almost the final. And I've settled on this arrangement at the beginning of the drawing. It's back in New York. And this is the completed version. And my next setup in New York. All this is on top of my uh, storage cabinets for drawings and prints. This is a poster, a silk screen version of a watercolor. I did the screen painting as well, the separation, color separation, for an art school 
in the, the Dominican Republic where I spent about two weeks at a time. I think I went there three times. And I'm drawing for the setup. This is a mixture of uh, cultures again. During each working session, I concentrate on one object. The skull, which is a hammer head, and the owl, or pre-Columbian, Aztec. In the middle, the face with the tongue hanging out is ancient Greece. And on either side of that, is the smoking figure is American Indian, but from a, the ancient times, Anasazi. The smoking figure is Anasazi, and the, uh, the other is more modern, but it's American Indian. In the back, that castle-like form is a Han Dynasty burial urn, as is the one on the uh, right. And at the top right of the painting, I have two Greek horses. They're from a vase, Etruscan. They're Etruscan. My collection of toys, many of them were bought from a store owned by a friend from Pittsburgh. I never met him in Pittsburgh, but I met him in New York. He had a store on Columbus Avenue selling old toys. Almost once a week, when I took our dog for a long walk, I would pass his store on Columbus Avenue, and very often I'd stop in and buy another toy, and they bat it up. Lots of dog walks are represented. <laughs> They astound me with the amount of detail that goes into them, especially on the exterior decoration, presumably done in factories by untrained people. I love the details, the decoration on that bird and the snail, I think is marvelous. One of the best works of art I know. The new setup with a mixture of pre-Columbian and uh, ancient Greek objects. Pretty much the final coming close, and now I finished painting the table uh, and the revolving, um, you know, the backside of the lazy Susan. <laughs> Another setup with antiquities. Hippopotamus is African.
And here I'm starting a painting of a toy Godzilla that fully functioned when it was new. Its mouth, when you uh, hit the button to start the movement, the face lit up, the eyes lit up, glowed red. The mouth shooted off sparks and uh, the hands moved up and down and the feet walked. The body twisted while it was moving. Now, all that stopped. It only lasted a few times when I turned it on and it's been static in this position for the last, I assume, 20 or 30 years. It was given to me by my daughter, Julia, as a birthday present. I can't remember which birthday, but if it was about 20 or 30 years ago, I would have been in my 70s, probably my 70th birthday, whenever the Godzilla movie was new. But I've been fascinated by the careful buildup of the anatomy that the toy maker who designed it put into it. And it's covered with scales, an indication of the scales all over the body, which I had no way of indicating. I could apply them, but not individually paint them. There are thousands. And the musculature, the body and the arms and legs is so exact. It's amazing as a work, as a sculpture. Uh, so I've kept it all these years, prominently displayed in my studio. The large vase on the left side is uh, from Colombia. It's pre-Columbian. And uh, I was intrigued by the stylization of the face. It's partly sculpted and partly painted, mostly painted on the body of the vase. It's now springtime.